Hi, this is Murik reporting from uh, Berlin, and this is part uh, 12 of my using React Hooks with uh, D3 series. And in this one, I want to show you how to create this uh, world map I have right here with uh, D3 and React. Uh, so um, this world map will uh, highlight the different countries with a red tint, depending on the property I select uh, down here. And now I'm looking at the world population and I can see which country has the highest uh, population. And uh, I can also look at the uh, name length and uh, like GDP, which is re related to uh, like economy. And um, yeah, and also um, I can click on um, one of these countries and it will then uh, display the name and the value of the current property I have selected uh, down here. So uh, yeah, that's it, stay tuned. So uh, this is my app component and this is where I uh, render the geochart component we will be building from scratch. And this is also where I render the uh, select uh, you can see down here. And the most important thing in this file is actually this uh, file I am importing up here, this uh, JSON file. And this JSON file is a very special type of JSON called GeoJSON that uh, D3 uses to render like uh, these uh, countries. And uh, each country is uh, defined as a feature in this uh, GeoJSON file. And each feature has like this properties uh, object, uh, which defines all of the different properties of this uh, country, like name and uh, population and so on. And it also comes with the geometry of uh, this country. And um, yeah, this is what D3 uses to render these uh, like uh, shapes. And uh, you can get this GeoJSON file uh, from everywhere and I personally got it from uh, this website geojsonmaps.ash.ms and what you can do you can just select the different regions you want to include in your geojson and export it and uh, use it in your uh, project and normally these uh, geojson files they come with a geojson ending and uh, like dot geojson but uh, create React app, which I'm using here, doesn't really uh, know how to handle .geojson files. And this is what you, why you can also just uh, rename them into .json files, and uh, because they are like basically uh, JSONs. And uh, yeah, this is uh, things you need to know uh, about this session. So uh, this is my geochart component I have now cleaned up and uh, we will be rebuilding this chart from scratch. And uh, what you can see here is basically the boilerplate component uh, which I have been using for this series. And uh, I am just like rendering an SVG and accessing it in this use effect hook after all of the DOM elements have been rendered. And then I am passing this uh, DOM element to this select function from D3 to uh, like access it and apply some D3 magic. And uh, yeah, and the only thing that I actually updated is uh, this part right here. And earlier in um, this series, I was actually just looking at the dimensions I am getting from this use resize observer hook that gives me the uh, current dimensions of my uh, like element I am uh, giving it. And um, I was just skipping the like rendering of my chart if these uh, dimensions were undefined or null. So, uh, but this time I'm actually falling back to the uh, like bounding client rect of uh, this DOM element if the dimensions are null at the very beginning and they are null at the very beginning. So this is just a little um, optimization I did right there. So one of the things you also need to understand when working with D3 and this D3 Geo package in particular are projections. And as you might know, the world is like spherical and uh, we need a way to transform the geo coordinates uh, we uh, get from this GeoJSON file we have seen earlier um, into like uh, pixel values on a two dimensional uh, plane. And this is what projections are for. They translate the geo coordinates um, uh, we give as an input into like pixel values um, as an output. And uh, there are different projections you can choose um, as you can see here. And the uh, projection uh, I have used earlier in the demo was the Mercator uh, like projection. And um, yeah, this is what D3 uses to translate the uh, geo coordinates into pixel values on a two dimensional plane. So the projections I have just shown you, uh, they actually come into play when uh, combined with another function from D3 called GeoPath. 
And what GeoPath does, it returns a function, and uh, this function receives any GeoJSON data or uh, features in a GeoJSON uh, file, or countries in our case, as an input, and transforms them into D attributes of a path element in an SVG. And what we want to do is we want to render a path element for every country uh, in the world, and we want to attach these D attributes to these path elements to define their uh, shape. So now I will define the path generator. This is the function uh, the geopath returns. And for that, I'm going to go down here and say const uh, path generator equals geopath. And uh, this is uh, where the projections now come into play. And uh, I can now define the projection I want to use for this uh, geopath or this path generator to influence the uh, shape or the positioning of our uh, path elements. And the projection I want to use is the Mercado projection, and I'm actually going to define it a bit up here because I want to modify this projection later on. And uh, for that, I'm going to go up here and say projection equals geo Mercador. And this projection I'm going to pass to my uh, geopath chain. And uh, yeah, like I said, this G path generator function we will uh, use later on. Uh, to transform the GeoJSON data we have into like shapes on our um, SVG. So to make it a bit more clear, I added these uh, comments to uh, explain what the projection does and what the uh, path generator will do for us. So now that I have the uh, path generator and the projection, I can now focus on uh, yeah, creating a path element for every country in the world. And to do that, I'm going to use the general update pattern. And uh, if you're not familiar with that, please check out the very first session of this series. So um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, D3, select all of the like existing elements in my SVG with the class name country and synchronize them with the data I'm giving you here. Uh, and the data I'm going to pass is actually going to be the features array of our GeoJSON uh, file. And you can see the features a properties and array, which defines all of the different countries in the world, uh, like Cuba, for example. And uh, then I'm going to say dot join. And uh, I want to create a new path element for every uh, like uh, new piece of data. And what I also want is I want to attach the attribute uh, class country to these elements so that they can update later on. And uh, this will create the path elements for us in our SVG, as you can see here. And what we want to do now is we want to define the shape of each path element using the path generator. So to uh, define the shape of uh, every country, I have to add another attribute to my path element, the D attribute. And here is where I can define a callback function, which receives the current feature from this uh, features array. And uh, this feature I am then going to pass to my path generator, which will return the like appropriate D attribute for me. And uh, if I save that, uh, you will see the world actually. So, uh, but it's not positioned correctly. This is what we're going to fix next. So to fix this issue, we can just go to our projection and say uh, dot fit size. And uh, like its name suggests, it uh, like fits the projection to the uh, dimensions I have to now pass in here. So I will just say uh, the dimensions are going to be the current width and height of our SVG, which I receive from here. And then I also have to pass in a reference. So if I, for example, pass the entire uh, like GeoJSON data in here, then it will <clears throat> fit the entire world in our SVG. But if I pass in like the first country here by, by saying uh, data features uh, zero, the Bahamas, then it will make sure that the Bahamas fit in our uh, like viewport and nothing else matters. So, uh, but we're just gonna go back and fit the entire uh, world in our SVG. So now that we have the world, I now want to focus on the color coding of each country. And to do that, I have to first know what is like the min and max value of the property I have selected here in this select input. And the name of that property I'm getting uh, as a prop uh, called property. So uh, yeah.
so yeah, to get the min and max value of uh, the property I have selected, I have to import two more things from B3 called min and max. And I'm going to go here and say const min prop, like the lowest value, uh, equals to uh, min. And here I have to pass in the entire features array, data features. And then I have to tell the three or this min function what to compare in this uh, array. And the thing I want to compare is uh, in the feature, the, like in each country, I want to look at the properties uh, object. And then I want to look at the property uh, I am passing here. And the same I have to do for the uh, max value like so. And if I just log these out, console warn min prop and max prop, uh, you will see what the min population and the max population is. Oh, what did I do wrong? Oh yeah, it should be max here. It seems one of the countries has a like negative uh, population for some reason. Maybe it's unknown. So you can see the highest population is like 1 billion, which is probably uh, China. So now we have the uh, min and max values. We now want to use them in a color scale. Uh, yeah, to like distribute different colors to each country. So to uh, do the color coding, I have to import one more thing from D3 called scale linear. And if you're not familiar with scales, uh, I suggest you watch the third video uh, where I go into scales and axes. And uh, this scale linear will be responsible to map the uh, range we have here from min and max to like a color uh, scale. Uh, and uh, we do that by saying const color scale equals uh, scale linear. And here we want to then define like the input and the output values, the input in the uh, domain here. Uh, the input values are going to uh, be from somewhere between min prop and max prop, the values. And the output values are going to be the range from this uh, light gray to uh, this red, uh, let's say. And uh, yeah, this color scale, I then want to use to define the fill attribute of my path elements by going down here and saying fill. And here I have to pass the current uh, value of that property to this color scale to get the cor correct color. And I do that by saying color scale and passing in the feature properties uh, with the current property I have uh, received as a prop. So if I save that, I now see like uh, the correct color coding for each country. So uh, what I want to do now is like I showed in the beginning, when I click on one of these countries, I now want that uh, the uh, world map zooms in on this country and uh, yeah shows the country name and the value of uh, that property I have selected for uh, that country. To do that, I want to save the currently selected country or the currently selected feature in a use uh, state hook. And I'm going to import use state for that. And then I'm going to say const uh, like selected country and set selected country equals use state. And this is going to be null from the beginning. And then I want to say, okay, when a path element is clicked, so on, click, and here I will receive the current feature as an argument in a callback. And here I want to say, set selected country uh, to this feature. So now I will have uh, the featured at my, or the selected country at my disposal. And then I want to say, okay, when I uh, like re-render this uh, entire chart, which will happen when the state here updates, I now want to use this country or the selected feature as the reference for my projection. So I will say, uh, if there is um, uh, like the selected country, if it is defined, use it as a reference, but if not, just fall back to the entire, uh, like entire world. And if I now save that and click on a country, you can see, it will, uh, yeah, uh, zoom in on uh, the country. It's not animated, but uh, we will fix that right now. 
Uh, so the animation or the transition is quite easy. We just go to our path elements here and we say we want to transition everything which comes after this transition call and it will transition both the uh, fill attributes and also the D attributes now. So if I select another property like name length, the color coding will uh, transition. And if I now click on Brazil, for example, then uh, we will have this zoom in effect. Uh, but it doesn't zoom out if I click on the country again and I want to fix that real quick and say, if the selected country is the feature I'm currently clicking on, then I want the selected country to be null or undefined or whatever. Uh, and otherwise I want it to be the country I just uh, clicked on. So if I click on Brazil again and again, it will zoom in and out. Uh, so yeah, I just added some CSS to my code here to make the uh, country I hover over a bit more visible by adding a black stroke. And there's something else I wanna uh, fix. Um, it's not that obvious, but if I increase the duration of my uh, transition here, to one second, then you will see there is some like distortion or some jitter going on when we zoom in. Like if I select Germany, for example, you can see there's like some weird stuff going on uh, with the SVG um, when we yeah, zoom in and out. And that is something we can fix by going to the projection and saying dot precision. So this will increase the like resampling or like recalculation um, precision uh, and the default value is like a root of 0 0.5 or something. I don't really know uh, about uh, this number or this Douglas Poiker distance, but if I give it a really high distance, uh, like 100, um, then it will uh, look much, much better as you can see now. So this is something that I found out uh, how to increase the like quality of these uh, zoom ins and zoom outs. So the last thing I want to do in uh, this video is I just want to show the name of the country I have uh, selected and I want to show the value uh, of the property I have selected down here for the selected uh, country. And to do that, I'm just going to paste the code I have, I have prepared for this session because it is not the main focus of uh, this video anyway. So I'm just going to explain it. So uh, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm rendering a text element for every like selected country, which is always one and I'm um, giving it the like right class name. And uh, as the text content, I am just passing it the like uh, property I have selected down here for the uh, current uh, feature, uh, which is the selected country in this case. Uh, and I'm also doing some formatting for this uh, number. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. If I save that, I will just see the name and uh, yeah, the value of that uh, property. So yeah, that's it for uh, this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned a thing or two. And uh, this is going to be it for me for this year. I'm going to continue uh, in the next one. So uh, I hope you play around with it. Uh, maybe even try out different projections like, I don't know, geo uh, orthographic or something. And uh, then you'll see we have a completely different projection going on. and everything will still work um, the same way it did. You can even maybe try out like rotating earth or something. I don't know, just go nuts with it. Um, yeah, um, I hope you have a, a nice uh, Christmas if you celebrate it and a uh, nice New Year's. And um, yeah, I hope to see you in the next one.